everyone. Welcome to Where I'm From 103. I'm Allison, and Julie will be joining me shortly. I read um, this really amazing book uh, called Thinning Blood, a memoir of family, myth, and identity by Leah Myers. And it's about her journey as potentially the last member of her tribe and her family line due to strict blood quantity. And self-discovery and and she uses myths from her, her tribe Scallum tribe in uh, what we call the state of Washington Julia Julie <laughs> not Julia Julia I'm saying join me except I'll try inviting you see if that makes any difference um, anyway it's a great book I'm going to try to get Julie. I've accepted her request five times and I've invited her once. Except. Um, I assume you're on your phone, Julie. And. <laughs> Sorry, I just am laughing because I've accepted it like 10 times. <laughs> and every time I accept it, it um, just pops up again and it says you're unable to join yes so if this doesn't work we'll just start over oh <laughs> i accepted your request probably 12 times it was like kept telling me declined declined to request and so i had to keep repushing invite or whatever request to join. i've never had that happen i'm sorry Here oh, I am. don't you. apologize i've done enough of these that that ha it's just like instagram just decides like no no yeah and you just keep trying and it at this point it makes me laugh it used to make me break out in a cold sweat so you can't let it you know no, you said, don't give it that power <laughs> like we'll just start over you know well it's fine um so how are you good good, good. it's how so good to see you are you in california i am i'm in los Did angeles y'all have uh, hurricane parties and all that <laughs> <laughs> we just sort of hung out we had a, one of our kids had a friend over and it was very tropical it was a tropical storm it was rainy and i mean you're used to it in texas my husband's from texas so he was like yeah yeah, you know, and I'm normally from Louisiana, originally from Louisiana, yeah. so yeah, yeah, it was kind of not like a normal rain day. For yeah, us, but, yeah, it just rained glad. a lot. I'm yeah. glad it didn't get too I, bad for y'all because it can be scary. Yeah, I was, I was very grateful. We didn't get the wind. Yeah. We didn't flood. Obviously, others were not as fortunate. I feel very grateful. And there was an earthquake. It was really just a jam-packed day of uh, craziness. Phenomenal. Yeah, the earthquake would scare me more being a southern girl. I mean, of course. <laughs> For me, it's like, ah, I didn't feel it. My husband's like, you feel it? Oh, no. I didn't bother know. you at all? <laughs> no. I, I I've just... never been in an earthquake, so I don't know what that experience is like. But uh, thankfully, I think it, not the wood. I know. think your mileage varies with earthquakes, probably with yeah. everything, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, so um, well, I'm just so happy. I put my little thing, you know, I first met you on Instagram because of your dog and your duck. Oh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. I think we connected through binders or something. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 And I just like, but like really every interaction I've had with you has been so lovely and positive. So it's nice to like meet you in this way I, and someday we'll meet in real life. Same way about you. I admired you and your work for oh. a long time. So it's lovely to actually be face to face now and I appreciate it. Thank you for giving me that time of yours. You do so much great work not just in this space but just elevating women's voices and connecting people and and just all you're just i was telling my husband last night about this event i was like to me you, everything about you is just genuine and authentic mm -hmm. and compassionate and you are just a light and so i'm just thrilled to make this personal connection with you thank you thank you that means a lot to me and i feel the same way about you and <laughs> i i think it's a joy to connect people like it is. it's so fun when people you like meet each other and like each other. It feels like matchmaking, you know, and like I you know. get it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, we should be matchmakers in, in another life. That would be I, fun too. <laughs> I sort of tried for a while. I was like that annoying person who was like, you two should meet, you know, and everyone's like, leave us alone. We're, we're single. <laughs> right. 
Sorry. It works. It did work for one couple, and they're married. Oh, that's so, a good happy ending. There's yes. your meaty story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I can see you being good at that for sure. I just want everyone to be happy, which is can be a little pushy. But, you know, it's coming from a good place. It is. It's like, no, really. Good intention. You too. Yeah. <sighs> so um, anything else before you start your poem? I, I'm excited to share my poem. I was telling Rob, too, last night. I was like, I never share this much personal stuff mm -hmm. on a public face mm -hmm. like I might in small containers with mm -hmm. certain groups of people or certain circles but this feels so personal and so yeah. I had to kind of like take a deep breath before I jump off the deep end here but I'm gonna do it <laughs> because I love you and you asked me to so I'm gonna do it for you well and you really <laughs> went in there I mean you know there's different options you can kind of keep it more yeah. on that but you were like no I'm going so I think you, that's my you did. Yeah, yeah, I me mean, too. Yeah, it's hard for me to uh, sugarcoat things. Me you know? so too. Here. One of these days <laughs> I'm going to write a happy, like, sunny version of this poem, but I, I'm not there yet. I think yeah, I have to get that? through all the other ones, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe so. I don't know. I mean, I'm a happy, joyful person, but you can't me tell too. from what I'm wrong. <laughs> really me too. So <laughs> and then I think, well, maybe that gives other people hope if they're feeling like, in that abyss, yeah. like yeah. there is another, but there's the other side. Like oh, you can get to the other side, and and I feel like in a lot of ways I have, and there are still moments where you you go underwater, you know. Yeah. But but the more you get out, the more you swim through. Whatever, the more you know you can. Yeah, like, and I'd rather, rather be authentic about. Yeah, there's room in our hearts for all of it, all true. of that spectrum of human emotion. We can have the sad and the grief and the hurt. But we can also still have room at the same time for the joy and the gratitude and the discovery and the imagination and creativity. It's all, there's room for all of it. I agree. Um, but I think we're supposed to embrace all of it to be fully developed and grow as much as we're supposed to grow. And it's not always fun or easy, but <laughs> that's what, that's the <laughs> way we're made. <laughs> we're no, and I agree things. with you. I mean, yeah. I think when I felt less of, I felt less of the grief or felt less of everything. Like, I do think there's a relationship to sort of, yeah. you know, closing doors. I, after a while, you don't get to choose which doors you're closing. They just. Yeah. Not being afraid to feel. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just embrace it all, whatever it is, but not let it devour you. Yeah. That's, that's the line, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Knowing that there are other emotions to come yeah. and better moments to come and you will get through the darker pieces yes yeah. okay well with that intro <laughs> here we go okay you want me just to read it yeah now? yeah okay i will do my best okay it's a little bit long so stick with me and i have to wear my old lady glasses i love your glasses <laughs> this is my big old lady here i'm embracing <laughs> page okay. um this, these are all called where i'm from right yep. this is your thing and this is your what hundredth and first second a hundred and third can you believe it i'm so honored yeah, no, I can't. And and they have meant so much to me. The ones I've gotten to hear, they just, they're all wonderful. I encourage people to go watch the whole series. Just, just binge watch it all. It's amazing. Amazing. Okay, here we go. Where I'm from. I am from love. I am from church hymns and bedtime stories and good morning, sunshine. I am from late night lullabies, granny's piano, rolling out the rag times, mama's voice teaching us nursery rhymes. I am from the three bedroom brick ranch home on an acre of Louisiana lowlands. Our thick green grass dotted with the curls of crawfish towers and the scatterings of crepe myrtle blooms and the remnants of mud pies baked fresh across the concrete driveway. I am from underdogs as I pushed my little brother in the tire swing. Both of us laughing, laughing, laughing as he soared higher than the treetops, higher than the feathery clouds, higher than the too hot, too bright, just right midday sun. I am from live oaks and cedars and pecans, each offering us shade or nuts or a perfect hollow trunk where the wild geese laid eggs and where we all swapped stories letting our voices echo around the magical belly of the tree. I am from bedside prayers and cookies for Santa, wishes on shooting stars and letters to the tooth fairy, Easter egg hunts and trick-or-treat with hand-dyed eggs and childhood costumes, 
I am from Sunday school and Bible drills and mission work and last two long revivals from John 3.16 and past the offering plate and second grade baptism dunked deep in the water as the preacher said, amen. I am from running barefooted across sticker patches and black asphalt and rough gravel lanes just to thicken my skin enough to prove I could take the pain. I am from seafood gumbo simmering on my granny stove and I'm from peeling fresh gulf shrimp in the kitchen with my mama. I am from Sunday pot roast and a batch of crowder peas fresh from the neighbor's garden. I'm from y'all come to the table. Who wants to say the blessing? Pass the sweet tea. Manners matter. And we're so glad to see you. Have a seat. Let me tell you a story. I am from the perfect family. Sunday school teacher, Baptist deacon, Colorado ski trips, Florida beach weeks, new plans for the dream house, new keys to an independent bookstore, and new clothes without any worry about the bill. I am from Say Cheese at Olin Mills and hold still while I braid your hair and count your blessings. And isn't life wonderful? And from walking to the store where we add it to the bill and stock up on apples and Little Debbie snack cakes and Coca-Cola from ice cold bottles. Bottles we'd line up and shoot with BB guns once empty. I am from discovering a BB in my arm in my 20s and wondering which of my feral loved ones had shot me, the four of us, <laughs> roaming the swamplands, climbing trees, building camps, trying to lasso the moon. Three, gone too soon. Only one still standing. One by one, like the bottles, they fell. Cancer, suicide, heroin. One left, asking every day, why them? Why not me? Why not me? I am from being named friendliest and most school spirit, all while taming the tears and cheering, 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 trying to help everyone else meet their goals, be the champion, rise to the top, find what they were looking for, because God, if only they could find what they were looking for, then maybe then they could all be happy, and then maybe then we could all be happy, maybe, maybe, maybe. From riding bareback across the pastures and holding my own against the boys, playing baseball, basketball, and football in the yard, but loving how it feels to twirl in a skirt or try a new tube of Avon lipstick or wear a pretty dress to the prom and hating how it feels to be thrown from the car and left in the mud, prom dress ripped, heart bent, bent but never broken. I am never broken. I can hold the pain. And this, this the start of many ruins to come. Many secrets kept. Stop twirling. Stop shining. Stop speaking. Stop. Shh. Stop. I am from hiding the hurts and fixing the damage and wearing the homecoming crown. It's rhinestones shining like diamonds but they were never diamonds, were they? Were they? I am from before and after. Before learning the men we love don't always come back or show up or keep promises or tell the truth. Before learning, they don't always love in return or try to do what's right or care. They don't care. Don't care. But I am from I care. I care. I care. I am from a white wedding and a sincere I do and a trust way too big and too naive for my own good and a determination to build a family that would never fall apart. From two miracles and a love so deep and so full as I held my babies tight to my breast and promised I would never, never, never let this world break them, not them, Never them, but I am from broken. Broken vows and broken truths and broken pieces and broken spirits and broken people. I could never put back together again, no matter how hard I tried or prayed or cheered or cried from too much broken, broken, broken. 
I am from Cynthia, Kathleen, Della, Juan D, from Scottish and Irish and Choctaw and Chickasaw and French and Caribbean, from a long, long line of strong, brave, brilliant, beautiful women, women who carried more than their fair share of the pain, women whose goodness and selflessness were too often undervalued by the men they loved, women who chose to love and laugh in spite of it all, except when they couldn't, and sometimes they couldn't. I am from, he can't help it, and he doesn't mean it, and love counts no wrongs. I am from, forgive, 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 forgive. From why can't you stop talking about it and never speak of this again, and you should just get over it, and you need to let it go. From be sweet, smile, hush, and this is just how men are. Deep down, he loves loves you. Give and 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 from late night prayers and one breath at a time and God has a greater plan and it'll all make sense in the end and someday they'll see. They'll see. I am from my soul has been dragged across the asphalt and the gravel and the sticker patches far too many times to count now. And I have grown tired of proving that I am tough enough to carry all that pain from I'm tired. I am tired. I am so tired. Please, God, help me. I am tired. I am from inhale, exhale, and it will all be okay. But knowing deep in my bones that some things will never, never, never be okay. And still, no matter how much may be taken from me, I will always have those days in the sun with my brother laughing, laughing, laughing. And I will always have those days with my children loving, loving, loving. Because I am from love. And I choose love. I am love. A little bit long. <laughs> but thank you for letting me do that. That was such a journey. You, you did make me cry. I held on till the end because um but what a I mean you you did a you did a lot there. It was not just what you experienced as a child, but what you experienced as a child and how it created you you know, formed your life. And then we got to go on the journey with you and your life and um, we have so many overlaps, so many funny overlaps as I was listening. I was like, oh my God, I had feet like that. And <laughs> so thick. <laughs> and I was so proud yes. of them. Yes. Like it was a real symbol of my toughness. Like, of look at, yeah, yes. look at these. I can walk on hot tiles. Yeah. Like I don't even feel it. Um, <laughs> and then all the sayings, obviously they're so heartbreaking and i think they're all too common for so many people but the second set of sayings you know yeah. um he can't help himself he doesn't mean it he you know um instead of wow i'm so sorry yeah. this is devastating he loves you deep, deep down mm -hmm. hang on you know instead of maybe he doesn't love you and maybe it's okay to let somebody go if they don't yeah. love you and don't want to be, you know, it's okay. You don't have to stay in a, in a lion's den. Yeah. You don't have to stay in the pit. Um, it's okay to release people. Um, but instead, I think so many women, especially in certain cultures are taught, you stay, you cling, you forgive, you beg, you try, you do everything in your power, you know, to, um, walk the trapeze mm -hmm. <laughs> and um sometimes you can try all of that and it's not enough and, and you know like the song says you got to let them fly and yeah. uh, that's not always the message we're given you know we're if we do if our marriage falls apart or our relationships fall apart or our families fall apart so often it's the woman that carries all the blame and shame you know we fail as a good christian wife or we mm -hmm. fail as a good girl or a good wife or a good mom or a good daughter or whatever yeah. uh relationship that is or a good friend or a good sister yeah. um but sometimes relationships fall apart and it, it doesn't always mean that we have to carry all the blame and shame of things if, if it's a hurtful painful abusive relationship for any of us yeah yeah you have to choose yourself i mean sometimes i feel like i you know it's 
really boils down to that for me. It's with my uh, brothers, but it's like it was him or me yeah. in the yeah. end. Like one of us was going to make it out alive, and I, I decided it was me. I think so many times relationships can become so toxic that somebody's going to die, or more than one person are going to die. Yeah. And when it gets to that point, it is not selfish <laughs> to leave. <laughs> and it doesn't need to get to that point, FYI, anyone who's dealing with these issues. It doesn't need to get to that point. But I, I have found it interesting. Like, obviously, you're talking about a divorce. I'm talking about estrangement. Yeah, you know? and whatever. Yeah, and yeah. people oftentimes want to know why, 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 why? Why? What happened? What was the thing? What was the, you know, and, and, and I tried so many different versions out over the years. Well, this happened. Well, this happened. And, and there's really no, no story that will satisfy the certain types of curious people. There's nothing you can say that will convince them. And so that's why I sort of just started boiling it down. Like I chose me. That's what it was. I had and to I choose me. For, it's so hard for anybody to understand the dynamics of relationships unless yeah. you're in, you know, yeah. you, there's no words that can explain a lifetime of dynamics or, I mean, it can be a job situation. It can mm -hmm. be a toxic boss. It can be a toxic neighbor and you have to move. I mean, sometimes you're in a system that isn't healthy for yes. you. It may not be unhealthy for somebody else in that system, but it's not yes. healthy for you. And it's okay to accept and acknowledge that maybe what worked 20 years ago isn't working now or what worked last week isn't working now. And if you've tried everything else, I mean, I believe wholeheartedly in the value of family. Nothing matters more to me than yes. family. Um, relationships are everything to me. I'm one of those people that keeps friends, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't let people go very easily. <laughs> but if it's devouring you, if it's going to kill you, yeah. um, you know, sometimes you don't, don't have another choice but to say, I wish you peace. I release you. I'm here to offer love and kindness and peace and acceptance. But I also have to stay alive in this world of furniture. Yeah. And yeah. if this is the only way for me to do that or for you to do that, yeah. um, then maybe we need some space for a little while. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't have healthier relationships in the future if somebody grows mm -hmm. or changes or learns and i hope to god that people we all do that as human beings yeah. but it's okay to sometimes say let's take a breath you know sometimes that's needed yeah definitely um, yeah. <laughs> for sure i've done it many times and it's saved me so i highly endorse it it's uh gets less uncomfortable as time goes on i will say it's hard. um it's hard. a yeah. hard lesson to learn for sure mm -hmm. and then i also was really um you had shared with me that your brother died recently yeah. and so i sort and i've read the poem so i knew that was coming but are the other two your cousins or are they so there were um there was a small group of us who grew up together on the same road together and mm -hmm. of us three of us four of us were really close um two sisters and and my brother and me and the two sisters both passed away um Jeez. and my brother passed away so i'm the one left um three wonderful, wonderful people who yes. died way too soon. And, um, you know, you, you constantly ask yourself, why them and why me? And why does life fall the way it falls? And, you know, it's not uh, fair, it wasn't fair to them or their families or their, you know, so many people face unsurmountable challenges or situations that they don't survive. Yeah. Um, there are no, sometimes there's no reason good enough to explain the things that we survive no. or that other people experience, you know? It's, no, there it's, isn't. And that we want to make meaning of everything. Yeah. Something I've recently been talking about with a friend is like, you really do, as humans, we want to make meaning, but sometimes things just happen. Sometimes terrible things happen. Yes. Things that, you know, like I said, it, yes. knowing that sometimes it's not going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but forming some kind of, space for radical acceptance, I guess, you know, understanding what we can control and what we can't control and how to move forward despite, you know, losing whole big pieces of ourselves along the journey. Yeah. Um, pieces that we may never get back, but what, what can we do with what's left, you know? Yeah. 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 And so what was the experience like for you writing this? This was, I mean, like I said, this was a real journey. You did not like do it halfway, Julie. I don't think you probably do much of anything halfway, but you definitely didn't do this halfway. When you sent me the poem, I was like, 
whoa. <laughs> I think it's, it was cathartic. I think these mm -hmm. kind of exercises are so good. That's why I love this series yeah. that you're doing. I think everybody should do this. I love the prompt. Mm -hmm. I kind of went freestyle with it because, you know, I like, I like ideas. I'm not always a rule follower. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's a great personal growth exercise for mm -hmm. anybody. To do. Mm -hmm. And I've always believed wholeheartedly in the power of writing. Um, to process mm -hmm. the hard stuff, process the good stuff, process all of life, and help us focus on healing and growth and learning and, you know, finding ways to, to make sense of things that will never make any sense. Mm -hmm. And using those as tools or lessons as we move forward. I, I think writing helps me do that. I don't know if I'd be alive today if I hadn't found writing as a kid. And I think a lot of writers feel that way. And I just encourage everybody to find whatever that creative tool is for them, music or, or pottery or gardening or, you know, something to get the, take all that negative energy that's thrown at us in life and find a way to flip it around and, and give it back to the universe as something positive and counter that negativity that's always trying to come at us, you know, and, and say no. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to take all that and turn it into something beautiful mm -hmm. um, that can have meaning and, and give hope to somebody else. That's, yeah. I think, our our goal as writers so i encourage everybody to do that that prompt i, I mean i think for me too is talking like hearing you talk about it too it's really good at helping you if you're interested make connections between things that you may not have made connections is just a big thing i uh really love when i realize oh this happened and this happened and then this you know there because sometimes when we look back about where we're from it's i'll speak for myself it's hard <laughs> to unpack it all sometimes. It's just like you open it and it just comes flooding out. <laughs> like there's just so much. And this poem helps with the container of the poem helped. And then, I don't know, it was just, it helped me so much to have something guiding me that I wasn't just sitting thinking, what about childhood? You yeah. know, that's just kind of like, yeah. that's too open-ended. Well, I, I think all everybody in life experiences loss and grief and trauma and turbulence and you yeah, know pain sure. and, and estranged relationships and broken relationships. everybody it looks different for everybody illness you know whatever it is and some of those painful moments come at times in our lives in our childhood when we don't have the language or the capacity yeah. to do anything with all that yet so it just gets kind of tucked aside but it's not processed or healed yet and so i think these kind of structures help give us like you said a template to kind of go back mind those pieces of our journey that we weren't able to fully use yeah. at the time and mm -hmm. and see what they can offer us i mean they are painful and they're horrible and they shouldn't happen to anybody but for some reason the gods designed life to be a whole long piece mm -hmm. of suffering for many people some to greater degrees than others and uh any way that we can we can find to make sense of that i think is a powerful power superpower it's a superpower i agree yeah and to give it like some framing because like yeah. you say we don't have the language and so it's almost impossible to frame it in any way that our grown-up selves can understand so yeah. it is nice to kind of go back and revisit and i've been doing that formally in therapy where you like visit your younger selves you know it's yeah. cool and it is just there's something so, so revelatory about communion with, with our younger selves healing revelatory like here you are you are you are a fully formed five-year-old person yeah. you know with a whole world and expectations and experiences and to and that happens you know millions of times in your life that you are these yeah. all these different versions of yourself and so i i it's like time travel a little bit and i would i love it <laughs> and seeing how each of the pivotal crossroad moments yeah. and choices and experience impacted who you are today, the choices you've made to get you here, you know, it's just, I think it's so healing and helpful to understand who we are as human beings, as spiritual beings on this journey, believing in the greater story, you know, that not like one moment is one moment. Mm -hmm. One relationship is one relationship. And this world is such a big, magical, beautiful space. And there's so much good that sometimes we forget to recognize and see because the pain holds us down. Yeah. So, you know, if we can do something with that pain mm -hmm. and use it to make us appreciate even more the good moments and the blessings and the miracles, then that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs>
Thank you. you. It's just wonderful. I love that you've given, you know, at least 103 people the opportunity to do this and so many more who listen and join in. Yes. It's just a great exercise. I encourage everybody. Yes. Really. And reach out to me. You can DM me if you need the prompts and anyone can join me. So reach out if you're interested. And Julie, thank you so much for your poem and your time and your energy <laughs> and your enthusiasm. This has been a real pleasure. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you. And I want to hear more about your memoir. When do we get to read that? <laughs> <laughs> when do we get to read that? Um, I'm revising right now. And I, I picked it up again because my kids went back to school. And I was like, oh, I don't hate this, which was a really good That's feeling, perfect. you know? <laughs> I pick something up and it's like, oh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, good stuff in here. Yeah. And so I was telling some people in my writing group, and now I'm in the place where I'm just trying to make sure like everything's in the salad, yeah. like all the things, <laughs> yeah. you know, all the ingredients, like, oh, I completely forgot carrots. Oh, I need to, you know, so now I'm at that stage. And then, so it's coming along. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about it. I have not started querying or any of that. I know myself and I know that I need to just write it because I'll get to in my head yeah. otherwise you know, like yeah. with market and all that yeah. stuff. And it's like, no, I just need to write it, write the book I want to write. Then that's a different hat for a different yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Well, good. I can't wait to read it when you're ready. Oh, Thank I you, Julie. Wait. I'm looking forward to it. I really appreciate that. For sure. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're still doing comics and yeah. stuff like that too. Yeah. And then this anthology, the sibling loss anthology, we're working me and Lynn Shattuck who's a writer as well on a sibling loss anthology that we are starting to query and, I'm the glad proposal's you're doing done. It. Because, you know, it's the piece that, that often gets overlooked. Yes. We think about parents with children who have died. We think about children with parents who have died. But we don't always hear the story of the siblings. Yeah. And it's a very special kind of grief and a special kind of journey that uh, I think could use voice. Um, yeah, I'm glad y'all are doing that. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. And, and people that we've reached out to and talked to, I think everyone who's experienced it feels similarly. It's yeah. the type of bereavement that kind of gets overlooked. Very much so. Yeah. So and it, yeah, a hundred percent. And even yeah. just working on this anthology and being in relationship with Lynn and the different, different contributors, it has helped me give myself space to grieve, even though it, it has been decades since my brother died. It, I, my grief was the least important. I think you said something important there that a lot of siblings feel like they have to stay strong because the parents are so broken by it, you know, yeah. or vice versa. Um, but there's not really anybody who knows how to deal with the siblings who are left, you know, we're kind of just left to figure it out on our own and oftentimes as children. And um, yeah, I, I think it's time for that conversation to be had. And I'm really glad that you're the one that's going to be leading that. Yeah. That y'all are going to do that together. Thank I you. I think that's going to be a really good project. Thank you. I feel really inspired by, by uh, what we've done so far and read so far. And it just feels like, oh, this is important. And you know, yeah. that's like the goal, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Create yeah. something. Yeah. It's shining a light for other people to follow and what, behind you. What about you and all of your books? Oh. You have so many books. I, well, I don't know. I am writing a new novel now that I'm almost done with my first draft, so I'm happy about that. But mostly I'm editing other people's and ghostwriting other people's and teaching, and, and I love all of that. I'm so grateful to every little piece of this journey that I get to do. It's lovely and such a blessing in my life. Um, but yeah, hopefully, I just I just found out I have a fellowship for January to go away and write. Oh, congratulations. I'm really excited about That's that. Kind of and, kind of push everything else aside. You know how it is. You have mm -hmm. to kind of step away mm -hmm. and enter that creative space. So hopefully by the end of yeah. January, I'll have some news for you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm rooting for you. you. And I look and forward to reading friend. it. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you so much, thank Julie, you. for joining me and for your poem. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a lovely day. Y'all stay safe. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.